Hi, I'm Dave, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about creating ornate flourishes in Adobe Illustrator. Flourishes like these can be used to add flair to all sorts of different creative projects. Early on in my design career, I downloaded a pack of flourish brushes for Adobe Photoshop. And let me tell you, I use those flourishes on everything. The only issue with that was they were pixel-based brushes, which meant that you couldn't scale them up. If you know me, you know I swear by vector-based graphics. You never know when you're going to need to scale your stuff up to fill the side of a building. Am I right? So fast forward all these years, and I've created my own pack of flourishes. I've just posted them for sale on my website. Now you heard that right. I'm trying to sell these flourishes. That being said, since you're here watching this video, I'm just going to go ahead and show you my entire process so you can replicate these on your own and add your own spin to it. If for whatever reason you're running out of time and can't create your own, feel free to hop on over to my website. I'll leave a link down below and uh, pick up this pack. I'd, I'd really appreciate the support, but absolutely no obligation because I'm going to give it all to you for free here in this video. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. Let's hop into Illustrator where I'm going to show you this process from beginning to end. Okay, here we are in Illustrator looking at a few of the flourishes that I created for this flourish pack. And I'm going to show you how I created these right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. You can go up to File New to pull up the new document window, or you could hit Command N on your keyboard to pull that same window up. You know I love key commands. So I'm going to create a 1920 by 1080 document. It's HD size, just generic for this demonstration. Feel free to use any size that works for your project. I'm just going to have one artboard, and I'm going to be in the RGB color space. Hit Create. Once you have this new document, I'd like to make sure that my colors are ideal for setting up our first stroke. So right now, the stroke would be created in black, which would be fine, but it would have a fill of white. So we're going to make sure that we remove this fill. And then the black here isn't actually a pure RGB black. So let's set that back to the default 00. zero and then we've got a good color to start with. The first tool that we're going to use is the pencil tool. You can find that over here in your tool palette or you could hit N on your keyboard to pull that up. The pencil tool allows you to just use the mouse, which is all I'm using, to create some pretty cool looking smooth lines. Now, your path may not be smooth when you start. Let's go and troubleshoot that if you've got a path that looks a little bit less organic than this. If we double click on the pencil tool, you can see that there's a slider here for the fidelity. And if we slide that all the way back down to accurate, and then try this smooth path again, you'd see that every little jitter and inaccuracy in the movement of my hand is captured. This is good if you're trying to create like a signature and you want it to look realistic, but in this case we want a much smoother result, so we're going to go back in and we're going to turn the fidelity all the way back up to smooth, and we're going to sit, hit OK. Let's use the regular selection tool, V on the keyboard, grab all of these and delete them and start again. So N on the keyboard pulls up the pencil tool, set to smooth, and we're going to try and create a really nice looking smooth line here. Now feel free to manipulate this if there's areas that you don't like. Another method that I would sometimes use is to go to Object, Path, Smooth, and then you can play with this slider here to adjust just how many points are inside of this path, and maybe around there at 88% smoothing. It's removed a couple of those points and created a much more pleasing looking base for our flourish. Now right now, this has got a very basic profile on the stroke. If you open up your stroke palette, you can change that profile here to one of these defaults, which looks like a sharp oval. The sharp oval creates a really nice tapered looking stroke. When the stroke is very thin, it was only set to one point, you're not really going to be able to tell what that accomplished, but if we increase this all the way up to maybe 10 points for this document, maybe even a little bit higher. Let's jump up to 16. We've got this really nice tapered end on either side, it gets thicker in the middle, and has a lot more substance. This is going to allow us to create some lines that come off of here and create our flourishes. So I can use that pencil tool again, and I can try to pick up a point somewhere along here in the path, and create a flourish that comes out and goes around. And surprisingly, that turned out really well. Sometimes that's harder to accomplish with the pencil tool, and you might get frustrated with the results not looking all that clean. 
So one of the ways that we can create a really nice spiral is actually buried over here underneath our line segment tool. So whenever you see a triangle on a tool, it means that there's something nested underneath it. So if we click and hold, we can see that there's a spiral tool that's nested underneath the line segment tool. With the spiral tool active, if we click and create our spiral, we haven't released our mouse yet. So we can adjust the angle of it, we can adjust the size of it. There's some other adjustments that I'd like to do here. So the up and down arrow are going to add and remove segments of these spirals. So you don't need to have all that many. You can create this nice curved line here, or you can have it hook back under a little bit. The other adjustment still with the mouse held down, that same click that I started, if you hold down the command key and now slide up and down with your mouse, you can change how tight these spirals are. So somewhere in about here, I think is a good sweet spot for us. And then once you release, that spiral has been created. Now this spiral is backwards. I wanted it to spin off of this line looking like that, but it's, it's backwards. So we can use two different methods of using the reflect tool to get that facing the right direction. So we can press O on the keyboard to pull up the reflect tool. It was nested here underneath the rotate tool. And then you could command, or pardon me, option click on the keyboard to pull up the reflect dialog box. Or you could just say object transform reflect and it gets you back to the same spot. And we can reflect it across that vertical axis. And now our spiral is facing the right way. Now, it still has that uniform profile on it. And in this case, we're not gonna use the taper to taper. We're gonna use a single-sided taper, just this triangle here. And we're gonna increase the stroke weight until the end of it is looking relatively close to what our original stroke was. We may wanna increase this weight here to create a nice smooth transition between them. So this can be done just by positioning this spiral in the right spot. You wanna make sure that you don't have an overhang. You want it to tie in as nicely as possible. Now, if your stroke ended up backwards, there is an option here that the profile can be reversed. If your stroke was looking like this, obviously that's not the effect we're going for. We can just reverse that here with our stroke selected. Now, I don't like how thin this taper gets around the end here. This profile obviously just goes thick to thin with no variation. We can adjust that with the stroke width tool. That's over here in our toolbar, or you can hit Shift W to pull that up. Now for these flourishes, what I like to do is find the last segment on these little spirals, click a point and thicken it up with the stroke width feature. So then that way we're getting a much more gradual tapering off to that fine point at the end. And it looks like this stroke continued at the same weight, creates that nice flowing path. At the end of these, I'd like to create a little leaf. So the leaf that I created for all my flourishes was just started with the oval tool. If you hit L on the keyboard, that pulls that up. And we can create an oval that looks like this. Now it's got a stroke around it. We want to change that to a fill. If we hit Shift X on the keyboard, that reverses them, the stroke and the fill. It's basically a keyboard command for this little switch up here, which just changes back and forth between a stroke and a fill. So if you did have a fill and a stroke, you can reverse them. But in this case, because one was empty, you're just switching them. So here's our leaf that's been created. Let's go ahead and use the pen tool. So press P on the keyboard or select the pen tool up here. And then we're going to option click on these endpoints and that converts them to corners instead of having the rounding handles come out or the bezier handles come out they're now converted to corners. And that there itself creates a nice little leaf that we can place at the end of this little spiral. Or if you wanna add a little bit more detail to the leaf, you can start to manipulate it with the pen tool. So let's press P on the keyboard, to pull up the pen tool with the path selected. Let's find a spot here that we like and add a point to the path. Then let's start to manipulate it with the direct selection arrow a on the keyboard would have been the keyboard command for that. And now we can pull this handle in and we can drop this point down. And then you can manipulate this a little bit to create a more of a leaf looking shape, a little bit more organic than just that original 
sharp oval that we created. Maybe make it a little bit thicker. All of this is up to you, depending on what style you're going for. And then you can find a good position for this on the end of your little vine that was created on your flourish. Something like that is looking pretty good. Now, there's a few other things that I would do when I was creating these flourishes. Sometimes I would find a curve and try to create a new shape. That would look like this. I can use the eyedropper tool, press I on the keyboard to select the same stroke um, attributes. The only thing it won't pick up for some reason is the profile. You can just set that by clicking down here. But now it's the same stroke width and color as that original. And we've got a nice little interaction happening there. You might even want to click and option, hold down option, create a copy of this, and then reflect it again back to the way that it was originally, maybe reduce it in size, rotate it around, and now you've got another nice little spiral coming off of this branch of our flourish. The same thing with this leaf, we can drag a copy out, maybe because this flourish was smaller, hold down shift and reduce it in size, rotate it and find a good position for that there. So this is looking very similar to all of the other flourishes that I created. There was another element in those that I'll show you how to create now, and that was those dotted lines. So this path here, I want to create something that kind of runs parallel to it and has a series of dotted lines or a series of dots attached to it. And I can create a new path. I can press N again and pull up a pencil and try to get as close to this profile as possible. But you'll see that the curve changes and I want this to look a little bit more, I don't know, structured and following this path almost identically. So the way that I achieved that result was to have the path selected and then say object path offset path. And then with offset path, we can determine how far apart from this original stroke we're going to offset this new path. So let's go out maybe 50 pixels, toggle the preview here. And I like where this is sitting now, starting at about here, the middle point between these two, and then running all the way up to there would be pretty nice for that dotted line. So let's hit OK. Because this path wasn't closed, the offset has created a closed path that's extended out on either side, but get this weird little box at the end. And we're gonna get rid of all of that by selecting this new path, pressing C on our keyboard to pull up our scissor tool, and then finding that point that I mentioned in about here in the middle, and cutting, and then cutting at about this anchor point here. And now this path is following the profile of the original one by that um, amount that we set in the offset path feature. And now this piece that we've cut off, we can just clear that. So now this section here, instead of keeping it with the tapered profile, we can come back to the uniform profile. At 22 points, what we'll do is turn on a dashed line and with a zero point dash and a gap that is much larger than your stroke. So in this case, it's more than double. You might even step up to like 65 point gap. And if we turn on the rounded caps for the ends of these dashes, it turns those zero point dashes into a dotted line. There, that's looking like a nice feature. And then let's do one more path offset. But this time let's double the size of it. So we picked up that original path and we went to path offset path, and instead of 50 pixels, let's go 100. And then let's cut that path at this intersect, and then cut up about here. And then we're going to clear this extra point or extra unnecessary area. Now this path here, instead of having it taper from end to end, let's go back to this single taper. And here's a scenario where the direction of the path was backwards, so let's reverse that. And now we have a nice path that kind of comes off of this original curve and then is extending on the other side of this, holding this series of dotted lines or series of dots. 
You can even get in here and manipulate this end point, change the direction of it a little bit to make it a smoother transition to this original path. There, I like that a lot. Okay, so that's it. All the techniques that you're gonna need to build your own set of flourishes that look like this. Basically, this here is everything that you need to know. It's a very simple building block that you can now combine with the other flourishes that you create to make some really elaborate layouts and compositions. So let's move this off to the side. I've got one here on my clipboard that I can paste in and scale this up, rotate it around, find a spot where it kind of links together, maybe remove this piece. And now you've got a flourish that looks like you've spent a lot more time creating it, just put together out of the building blocks that you had assembled. The other thing that I really like to do is to bring in other elements, logos, text, something like this. We've got a pen tool icon here. And this pen tool icon acts as a really nice bridge if we take this flourish and then reflect it. So O on the keyboard pulls up that reflect tool. And if we reflect it across that center point, create a copy, and we're left with these really cool looking wings that are being bridged together with a more defined vector element. So great for logos, text, and it creates this really ornate looking frame that is just way more complicated if you tried to create it from scratch. But if you break it down into all these simple building blocks, I think this looks really cool and is gonna be really helpful to you in a lot of your projects. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this tutorial and if there's any suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see me make. Really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video and I hope to see you around the channel in the future. Have a good one and never stop learning.